Okay, in today's video, what I want to go over is the rear diff bushing. Right here is the replacement you can get by white line. And the reason I want to go over it, the bushing I'm talking about is right up there. This black circle thing that's uh, in the diff. And what will happen is some symptoms that you will have is you have some uh, wheel hop. Um, when you go to do an aggressive launch, your tires will actually hop a little bit because as the differentials uh, trying to put power down from the drive shaft. Uh, that bushing, if it's uh, if it, what happens is the OEM one actually has oil in it, and I'll show you a picture of that later. Uh, when it busts, a good way to tell is from the oil in it, it'll drip down here, and once that's busted, it's loose its rigidity in it. So when the drive shaft uh, puts power to the differential, which puts power to these two rear wheels it'll bounce up and down in there and that's that wheel hop you're getting. So a good way to go ahead and fix that is, yeah, you could go to the dealership, they're gonna tell you, you need to replace this entire sub-assembly, which they're saying this bushing in here can't be replaced. They're saying it's not, ah, damn it. They're saying it's not a pressable bushing, uh, so you have to replace this entire sub-assembly. So they pull out that entire subframe and they want eight, I mean, close to 1800 to $2,000 to do it. And that's just ridiculous. Um, it can definitely be done. So what you do is you go out to light, White Line. Here's the uh, part number you're by for 100 bucks. Right there, KDT 911. And this is a much better bushing. So instead of getting redoing the OEM one, which will fail again when oil busts out of it, um, you get a polyurethane bushing. And the polyurethane bushing not only is a much better bushing than the OEM, uh, it lasts way longer. So this is a way cheaper alternative to go ahead and do uh, instead of replacing the sub -frame, sub frame assembly. And I didn't see a video out there on YouTube for a G35, so I'm going to go ahead and um, show you guys how to do this. And, and during this video, I wanted to give a shout out to Z33's Garage. Um, I watched his video for his 350Z, and that's how I saw his method of actually pulling this bushing out. So I wanted to give a shout out to him, and thanks for the help. Okay, before removing the diff, the first thing we want to do, go ahead and do is drain the differential fluid, which it takes 7590. And here is the bolt that you would use. H10 right there. So there's two openings. There's one right here. This is where you actually put the fluid in. You're not going to need to use that right now. You just go ahead and right here, put that in there, turn it to the left, drain the fluid. Okay, obviously you're going to want to go ahead. I'm showing you this as an illustration. You're going to have your exhaust removed because you're going to have to pull this up. Actually, yeah, you'd want your exhaust removed. I didn't know. On, um, I had the NVIDIA exhaust before this, and I definitely had to remove it, as you're seeing the pictures. Motor dying, I was looking to see. You might be able to get away without removing it, but it's just a lot easier to go ahead and remove it. So the next step is uh, we're going to do the drive shaft. So take a size 17. These are put on here at 50. It's got 56, 54 pound-feet of torque is what these are on at. So once you go ahead and break those free, and here's the spec on that if you're interested in looking. Right there, it shows you what you need to do. So go ahead and loosen up those bolts, and then on to the next step. Next up is we're going to remove the axles. So here's the service manual. A shot of it, what it says. They're put in, as you can see, I have it highlighted. They have the torque on it is 52 pound-feet as the nuts. And the wrench that you would use is a 14. So right up here. So I used a torque wrench to break it free on the one side. You can, you're gonna take another ratchet over here like this, and then you go ahead and just break this free, and then it's round the robin. Start spinning it, have the car on neutral, and this will be able to spin freely, so you can go to one bolt, to the next bolt, to the next bolt. Okay. Now when you get these, uh, your axles out, uh, a thing that they note in the service manual, and you're also seeing in my pictures, is to use a bungee cord 
I'm gonna use a bungee cord to just not let those dangle there. So as soon as you get those out, you wanna take a bungee cord and wrap around and hold them in place which you're gonna be able to go ahead and see because I went ahead and did this. I did this job about four years ago, I think it was. I did it in 2014, beginning of it. So close to four years ago. And at the time I didn't videotape it. Um, what had happened was My differential uh, in the very front of it it was dripping a little bit of oil so since it was dripping oil I want to go ahead and replace the seal in it and since the seals in the very front of it as you're gonna see the only way to really replace it was to pull out the whole pinion gear so since I went ahead and pulled out the whole pinion gear I went ahead and had uh, the pinion seal replaced so because I have the leaking seal, that's why I had pulled this all out. And um, I realized I wasn't able to replace the front seal on my own. So if you look at the montage of pictures I just showed, it's going to show like the big gear in the back, which is the pinion gear, I think it's called. And um, if that backlash is out by any millimeter of an inch, the gear assembly will eat itself alive. So I realized this is something I couldn't do. So I went ahead and looked up some um, differential shops that work on gears, uh, transmission shops. And I called into one of the shops. And this is a little tip I'll give to you of what I did, how I got a discount on this. So I called into the shop and I asked to speak to their main mechanic in the back. They brought him out and as soon as he got on the phone, I go, hey, you do side work? He goes, I do. I go, what's your cell phone number? He gave me a cell phone number. So then I waited till after his work day was over, called him when he was at home. And I said, hey, um, the reason he's willing to do this is because you're not paying the business. So you, he makes more money on it and I end up paying less. It's a win-win situation. So we're both motivated to do this. So I called him at seven. I said, hey, how much would you do this uh, to rebuild my a differential uh, if I buy the parts? He said, uh, 350. So he, I, brought, I bought the parts and he did it for 350. I had the front of the differential rebuilt. Uh, the whole, uh, all the, the three different seals and the gear. He said the back didn't need rebuild at all. It was perfectly fine, so I just let it be anyways. Um, I only wanted to replace it because the front was dripping uh, gear oil in my garage, and uh, I was trying to make it stop. And the only way to make it stop, instead of worried about adding oil, was to have to go all the way in there and replace that seal. So since I replaced that seal, I went ahead and also replaced these other two seals. Hold on here real quick. So I went ahead and replaced these two seals also. So this is the pinion gear I'm talking about. This is the, sim the whole, I replaced all this. And then I replaced these seals here in the very back. The seals here that went around. So, I mean, it was 350 in labor. I think I spent 180 in parts and I got that rebuilt. And then I also went ahead 
And as you can see, I went ahead and put on this Nismo diff cover. Uh, the reason for doing that is the Nismo diff cover, you get uh, an additional quart of oil in it. So instead of, I think, I believe it takes four quarts of 7590, I only use AMS oil. It'll hold a total of five quarts. So not only does it have a higher capacity, uh, the fins on it, as you can see here, they're just like a computer heat sink. The fins help actually keep the diff oil cool as air passes from the underneath of the carriage. Uh, past a differential. So if you're looking to take that uh, take that cover off, there's no need for you to actually do it. If you're looking to go ahead and put the cover on for yourself, here's the sheet on it, and I believe the spec on that bolt is 32 foot-pounds, not very much at all, to go ahead and uh, take the bolts off around and put on a new diff cover. Uh, one of the harder things I found was putting this uh, breather valve on it right here. That breather valve, the only way to really get it in there is you just had to hold it in spot and then hit it with a hammer and then it slid right down in. I'm happy with my diff cover replacement. So the one thing I kind of wanted to discuss is you may be thinking, uh, well, this, this G35 has a lot of issues. Uh, so back when I was actually purchasing the G35 in 2005, I really did want the E46 M3, a BMW, the BMW M3. So after, you know, replacing this bushing and it was kind of a crappy design by Nissan, like why would they put fluid in it? I was just curious. I went out on Google and checked out what's going on with BMW in the same year, 2005 E46. So luckily I didn't buy, I'm not trying to, you know, <clears throat> go anything against BMW. I actually like BMWs. I love the way that they're designed. Um, you know, <clears throat> they've taken, they continue to design well. Infinity is kind of a hit or miss. But one thing I found was their sub-assembly frame actually has issues with cracks in it. So right here is the article on it. And if you go and you look on Google, it's kind of everywhere where I guess the way it was designed, it wasn't designed very well. So if you put any kind of like hard turns or you drive it aggressively, the sub-assembly, the frame actually has cracks and it'll rip apart. And it's the way the welds were welded to the back seat and the trunk, I guess it is, if you read this article, it says the, uh, there is a, the subframe was bolted to the chassis at four points under the trunk floor. Uh, it's where it gets bolted and spot welded to the sheet metal of the floor. As the rear differential has load on it from the engine through the subframe, then into the chassis, the sheet metal will break the welds and additional cracks forming throughout the sheet metal. So I guess this is a very common issue from the 1999 to 2006 E46. Um, I currently do have an E46 right now. Uh, I have a 2003, but it's my girlfriend's. She drives it very easy. I haven't noticed it cracking yet. So that's a reason I was also searching for it. Uh, just wanted to bring it to your attention. So at least I've never heard of a G35, the sub subframe cracking ever. So hopefully this helps you. Instead of replacing the entire sub-assembly, which is, I believe it was $1,800 to $2,000, and that's just for the sub-assembly. Uh, that doesn't include labor. I believe with labor they wanted $2,700. Um, so I hope this helps you. You're able to just spend $100 with the white line bushing, which is way better than OEM. Um, it's a polyurethane bushing. It doesn't have any fluid in it. It'll last 10 years plus, I imagine. I, I haven't replaced it at all. I have no idea how long it'll last, but it should last a long time. Um, so, we'll go ahead and take a look at it up here, fully installed. And, and back to the pictures I was showing. So, when you get to this butching here, let's see if I can get my finger here. Huh. Okay, this bushing here, when you're taking that saw saw, you just want to slowly get down into that ring. And you're going to cut one spot on one side and then move over on this side and just cut a gap out of the ring. Once you cut a gap out of that ring, it, it'll basically just pop out. And then you slot, you go ahead and you slide uh, the ring out and then you're able to go ahead and slide this new polyurethane bushing in. It's fairly simple. Um, I, I put my polyurethane bushing in the fr uh, freezer while I was doing this. I don't know if it helped or not, just to make sure it was, it, you know, slid in with no issue. I just slid it in with a hand, my hand, because if you, you don't want to take a hammer and try to hammer it in because it, it's a, it's a polyurethane bushing and the rubber it might bounce back and the hammer hits you in the face. So that'll do it for today's video. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, 
please feel free to leave comments below, hit like, and uh, let me know what you guys think. See you guys next video. That's violent. Well, motor dying, she don't want